we might have just had the biggest 12 days in AI history in terms of announcements. So if you're unaware, OpenAI announced that they'd have the 12 days of OpenAI uh, shitness, uh, where every day they can live stream and release something new. So everyone was looking forward to it and saying, hey, what are they going to release? Uh, what's happening today? What's happening tomorrow? So on and so forth. And it was really exciting during the 12 days. And in this video, we're going to cover the 12 days that they covered, that they released. But also, uh, during these 12 days, Google went hard in the paint. Google was shipping as well, and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with OpenAI with announcements. So uh, let's just get going because there's a lot to cover. So on the very first day, ChatGPT announced the full release of O1 and a ChatGPT Pro subscription. So the Pro subscription costs $200 a month, where the Plus subscription costs $20 a month. So the $20 a month gives you access to limited access to the O1 and O1 Mini models, where the Pro gives you unlimited access, and it gives you access to other stuff, which we're going to cover in just a moment. Uh, so that was ChatGPT's first major announcement. Uh, they also announced other improvements uh, throughout the 12 days. So like on day four, they announced ChatGPT's Canvas feature, which allows for collaborative writing and programming with ChatGPT, where you can actually like make modifications rather than rewriting out the entire thing. There's also projects and folders available in ChatGPT now, uh, which was on day seven. And then on day eight, they announced the enhanced search feature, which is free access to everyone. So this is their search engine uh, that was only available to paid subscribers way back in October, which is now everyone has access to as long as you have an account and logged in. And that itself seems like a lot of announcements for a single company, uh, but we are just hit the tip of the iceberg. Uh, on the other side, Google released Gemini 2.0 Flash, which is their newest model. So if we go back like a week and a half, two weeks ago, and you ask anyone uh, who is into AI stuff, how's Gemini doing? Uh, not a lot of people took Gemini 1.5 seriously. Uh, Gemini 2.0 Flash, which is their uh, beta model or demonstration model, uh, is absolutely phenomenal. It shot up the charts in terms of rankings. Uh, it is quick. It has a, uh, or has a massive context window. And it allows multiple inputs and outputs. Google also announced Imagen 3, which is their new text to image model. So it allows you to make modifications to images in a very friendly way using prompts, or you can mask parts of an image and update the image that you want. So Google was also very busy making announcements, but again, tip of the iceberg. On day three, uh, OpenAI made a massive announcement with the release of Sora. So if you don't know, they announced Sora way back uh, nine months ago, and everyone's been kind of waiting since then to see, hey, when is Sora being released? Sora is their text-to-video generator. So you put in a prompt and you generate a video. It generates up to a 1080p video currently. So if you have the plus plan, you get a thousand credits per month. And if you have the pro plan, you get more. So uh, they kind of bundled it together, giving you a better deal. And everyone was going crazy. Sora was released. My feeds were filling up with Sora stuff. It was amazing. 24 hours later, Google dropped VO2, which is their text to video generator. Just theirs allows up to uh, 4K instead of 1080p. So Sora was 1080p. Google's like, no, we can do it in 4K. Here you go. And it also has adjustable camera and filming options. So uh, from what I've seen, VO2 is the best model, but the fact that we got Sora and VO2 in a 24-hour span, it's pretty incredible. Uh, let's continue. There is more. Uh, so on day two, um, OpenAI announced the reinforcement fine-tuning. So it's an alpha program for a new tool called reinforcement fine-tuning, and it lets developers train models on specific tasks. And also on day 12, which is... Uh, probably the largest announcement, which is the O3 model with advanced reasoning. So the O3 model just blew everything out of the water in terms of how it operates. Uh, just, it is extremely pricey. We're talking thousands of dollars for a single 
uh, generation. Um, Google also wanted to do a reasoning model. They have the Gemini 2.0 flash thinking model, which is also running a reasoning AI model similar to O1 or O3. Uh, it is not as good as O3, but it is still pretty good. Uh, so with OpenAI, uh, currently, if you want to use uh, any of their reasoning models, you have to pay for Plus or Pro. But with Gemini currently, you can go to AI Studio uh, .google.com and you can access the flash thinking model and I think you get like 1500 uh, queries per day or 1500 prompts per day. So it allows you to tackle larger problems with more accuracy. Uh, and throughout this video, I'm just trying to do a comparison in terms of what they released. It's not necessarily the day that was released. There is just so much to cover. It's been an incredible 12 days. And if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. So on day five of opening eyes, announcements, Google actually announced the Gemini Live demo. So it allowed Gemini to interact live through screen sharing, video, and audio inputs. And it was really cool. I saw that fill up in my feed. And 24 hours later, you're noticing a trend here, OpenAI announced their advanced voice mode, where now it could do video calling and take over your screen. And with an added bonus, they added Santa Claus mode. Santa, is this an OpenAI gimmick? I'm simply here to spread some. So, if you notice, they're literally going toe to toe in these announcements, and as a consumer, we are winning. On day 11, ChatGPT announced that the desktop app now works with Apple Notes, Notion, Quip, and some new coding apps. Uh, Google, on the other hand, announced that they are working on or will have released in the future Project Marner. It's a Chrome extension that tests and uses Gemini 2.0 to help computers browse tasks by understanding the page content. So it'll basically browse your computer and it'll do tasks for you. Uh, they also announced Project Astra uh, or an update to it, which is an AI assistant used with Gemini 2.0 to give instant responses through different Google commands. Uh, basically the short form of that is they want to put Project Astra on a pair of glasses that you wear. For programmers on day nine, it was all about developers. So in the API, you now have access to the O1 model and you also have real-time API improvements. Uh, Google also did some programming uh, enhancements. So it updated its code assistant with Gemini 2.0 and it added source integrations. Uh, it also unveiled something called Jules, which is a groundbreaking AI coding assistant designed to automate bug fixes and accelerate software development built on Gemini 2.0, which I have not seen yet, but they made the announcement for. Um, here's a list of just some smaller stuff that both companies have announced. When I say smaller, uh, it's all kind of incredible, like Apple Intelligence. ChatGPT made Apple Intelligence a thing, uh, and it's all integrated across iOS and macOS. And oddly enough, the day that they made that announcement, day five, uh, OpenAI crashed for a few hours. Uh, ChatGPT also has a phone number now you can call, 1-800-CHAT-GPT, and you can call and have a 15 minute conversation over the phone with ChatGPT. Uh, Google announced something called Deep Research, which is a feature that allows you to research stuff in depth. So imagine perplexity where it returns like five links, uh, Deep Research, can return, I've seen as high as 150 links, it will summarize it all, and you can one click and put it in a Google Doc. We have Notebook LM updates, which it now has the ability for the user to join the audio podcast. So the AI host will be able to accept questions and it'll interact with what you want and you can direct the podcast the way you want it to go. Uh, they also have a Notebook LM Plus with extra features and higher limits. Uh, lastly, Google announced something called Wisp, which is a tool for creating and modifying images with a subject, scene, and style. I have a video on that one that you guys can check out. So like I said, that is just Google and OpenAI, and I'm sure I've missed some stuff. It's been a really hectic 12 days with announcements, and it ultimately we win. That's, that's how I see it. 
And Google has already teased that it's too bad they have to stop for a few weeks because they have more to ship in January. So who won the 12 days of OpenAI? Was it OpenAI who made the announcement and did stuff every day? Or was it Google who just kind of said, hey, we're going to try to take over the news cycle? Uh, let me know in the comments below who do you think did better over the 12 days, who had the better announcements. And if you guys have enjoyed this content, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe as it tells more people that you like this content and they can help find the channel and I can keep making content like this. And don't forget to check out franklina.com for the latest AI news, AI tools, and a clean no ad interface. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Subscribe to Franklin, join the